You just created a beautiful spreadsheet with all of your wedding guests in it. And now it's time to send out RSVPs. You even figured out that if you create a form view in Airtable, it creates a form automatically from your spreadsheet. But wait, if people fill out this form, it's gonna create a whole new record like they're a new person. It's not gonna fill out the data that you need in that person's record that already exists. Luckily, we can solve this problem using Airtable automations and a tricky little bit of magic called pre-filled and hidden form fields. At the end of the video, I'll even show you how to automatically send out all of the RSVPs in personalized emails. Basically, in this video, I'm going to show you how to have your cake and eat it at your wedding too. All right, so I've got a blank base here. I'm gonna call it wedding RSVPs. And this first table we're gonna call guests. Get rid of the example fields here. So this is my place where I'm just gonna set up, uh, you know, my, my main hub for all of the people who I want to come to my wedding that I can then bring all the data into. Okay, so my guests have a name. They are gonna have an email address. We'll have a field that says whether they're attending or not. We'll make that a single select with a yes or no. What are they gonna have for dinner? Let's pick out some salmon, steak, vegetarian. And are they gonna bring a plus one? Let's make that a checkbox. All right, I think that's pretty good. Um, let, let me, I'm gonna add one more thing, which is the table that they're at. So maybe we'll use that later. A couple example tables. All right, so now that we have our basic table set up, the easy and straightforward thing to do would be to just create a form right here. And this, if we created this form, it would already have all the fields in it and we could send this to people and they would um, you know, enter their name and end up in this grid. But what I wanna do is I already have information about people, I already have their email addresses and I might send them another form later to, to get addresses. You know, So I really want this to be more dynamic than just having being able to send people a form and then get back um, info once. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to delete this form and I'm gonna paste my guest list in here. So you can see when my list is in here that some of the guests, I already have information on if they're attending and what uh, their dinner is, et cetera. But a lot of these guests, I, I don't know um, what they're doing yet. So I need to get that information. So next we're going to duplicate this table without any of the records. So I hit duplicate here, leave that uh, duplicate records untoggled. And so here is a copy with the same exact fields as the original table. We'll call this RSVPs. So basically the way this is gonna work is that we're gonna create a form in this table that takes people's data, but then we're gonna figure out a way to link it to the first table so that when the data comes in, it's going to copy and paste it into the record that the data corresponds to. So for example, if LeBron James fills out his RSVP, the data comes into here, and then the automation is going to find LeBron in the guests table and then copy the data that he entered and put it into his record in the guests table. To do that, we're gonna create a couple more fields in this table. We need one field that is called the guest ID. That's just gonna be a single line text field. And then I'm gonna do one that is the guest name. Now that we've got that set up, let's create our form. Let's call that the RSVP. And we've got our form here. I don't need the name and we'll actually, we'll create an automated name for this record later. Um, but the actual name of the guest is down here and that's gonna be automatically filled in. 
So here's our, our simple form. It's gonna take, and we don't need their email either. We're gonna have that. What we do want is whether they're attending, what they want for dinner, whether they're bringing a plus one, um, not the table either. And, uh, and then the ID and the name we are gonna fill in automatically. So there is our form. We can now take this form, copy it because we need that in the other table. So the next thing we're gonna do, going back into the guest table, we are gonna set up our form to pre-fill the guest ID and the guest name. So I will create a new field. This is gonna be called personalized RSVP link. It's a formula. And now we are going to make some quotations here and then paste in our form URL. So this is the form from the RSVPs table. And then at the end of that, I'm gonna add an ampersand, then a quotation, and then a question mark. And then I'm gonna say prefill underscore guest ID. And because there is a space in between guest and ID, and URLs don't take spaces, we have to use the URL equivalent of a space, which is percent 20. So guest percent 20 ID equals, and we want, what we want it to equal is uh, the record ID. So I'm gonna actually go outside the quotations now because this is a, anything inside quotations is a string or a piece of text. Outside is the actual dynamic stuff that we can pull from other places. So I'm gonna now add another ampersand and then put the record ID. So now we are gonna pre-fill the guest ID with the record ID of this table. The next thing I wanna do is pre-fill the guest name. And this is just so that we can see when an RSVP comes in that the form was filled out by this person. The computer is already gonna know by the record ID which person it corresponds to. This is just gonna make our lives easier when we're looking at the, the data. So add another quotations. And then even though we did the and outside the quotations, we also need an and inside the quotations because uh, the URL needs ands. That we're, the URL that we're generating needs ands as well. So this is gonna be an and. And then we'll say prefill guest name equals and then we are going to use now we're going to call the name here but this has spaces too and so i'm going to use another trick which is the encode url component function so this will automatically add the little percent twenties and anything else that you need um, to make it URL compatible. And so then inside the encode URL component, I can start typing name, put the name in there and we've got it. So let's create this field and let's see if it works. All right, so I have my form that opened up and the guest ID is filled out with the record ID and the guest name is filled out with the guest's name. Awesome. So this is a great start, but I don't want the guest ID to show when the guest opens it up. I guess it's a, probably a good idea for the name to show so that um, they know that they're entering out their own form. Um, but I'm gonna, I wanna hide this. So closing out and we'll go back to here. I'm gonna add one more thing to our URL string. So we'll add an and, then a quotation, then another and, and then we're gonna say hide underscore guest ID equals true. Save. And let's check out Dwayne Johnson. Okay, good. So now the record was hidden, but the guest name is here. I'm gonna have to move that to the top so it makes more sense. All right, now that we've got our form set up, it's time to make the automation. So we'll go into automations here and I'm gonna create a new automation 
and we'll call it copy and paste RSVP data. So the trigger for this is going to be when a form is submitted from the RSVPs table, we'll select the RSVP form and then we'll add the action to update a record. And so the record we want to update is going to be in the guests table and then the record ID. So the ID of the record we want to update is the guest ID, right? So we, so we pass the guest ID through the form so that we could use it here. And now that we have identified the right record, then we can paste in the data. So we want to know whether they're attending, make this dynamic and then grab the attending field. And we'll do the same for dinner, put plus one. So this is all set up now. I'm going to turn it on and let's see if we can make this work. So let's scroll down to one that doesn't have any data in it yet. And if we open the one for Kanye, we will get, we have our guest name here. We can choose attending. Yes. Um, he's going to eat the salmon and yes, he's going to bring a plus one submit. Okay. So we've submitted our form and oh, look at that. It already updated it right here. We got all our information. And the nice thing about doing it this way is uh, by the automation rather than there's another way to do this by uh, using linked records. But with the automation, these are still editable. And so if I need to go back in, if Kanye texted me and said, actually, I can't come um, or I want to eat something else for dinner, I can go ahead and change that for him. So that's it. We figured out the most complicated part of this automation. Since we made it this far though, we might as well set up an automation to actually send these RSVPs to the people in the database. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a checkbox that will trigger the automation to send the, the uh, RSVP. So we'll call this send RSVP. Make it a checkbox. And now let's go into the automations and create a new automation. This automation, I'm going to make I'm going to call it send RSVPs. And the trigger is when a record matches conditions. So we want to find our checkbox that we just created. Send RSVP. So when send RSVP is checked, the automation will trigger. And then what we want to do is we want to send an email. So you can send an email directly from your own Gmail address um, by uh, choosing the other option here. If you go down, um, there is a Gmail send email and you can actually link your Gmail address. I'm going to use the, the official Airtable one. And so this is going to send it from Airtable automations. And so now we can enter in our two and our subject. And so for two, I can go in and choose their email address right here. And then subject RSVP to Julian's wedding. And in the message, I can even address it to them. So I'll say, hi, name. I'm so excited to see you at my wedding. Please fill out this form. And then we're going to use a little mark down here to make the email cleaner and not just paste in a big, ugly URL. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put brackets like this and parentheses and the, in the brackets, I'm going to put the text that I want to show. And in the parentheses, I'm going to put the link that I want the text to have hyperlinked in there. So in the brackets, I'll say RSVP link. And then in the parentheses, we are going to take the personalized RSVP link. All right. So we've got our RSVP link. Now let's go ahead and test it. So I'll generate a preview and okay. Hi, Will Smith. I'm so excited to see you at my wedding. Please fill out this link. Click the link. Guest name is Will Smith. Yes, I'm attending. I'm going to eat the steak and bring a plus one submit. And let's go back to our data now. And there he is. 
all set. So now we can go back into our automations and turn this send RSVPs automation on. And now all we need to do is check these boxes here to send RSVPs out. And now I just sent emails to these random AOL accounts, which probably actually exist. So that's it. If you would like a template to make this easier to follow along, I will put the link to a template in the video description. If you liked this video, you will love learning more about automation in these videos here. Make sure to help out your fellow brides and grooms to be by liking this video so it will pop up for them too. And I will see you next time. Since you're still watching, I'm going to show you a cool bonus trick here for our, our wedding planners. Let's create a Kanban view. Create. And we're going to do it on table. This is why I created our table view because now I've got table one, table two, table three. I can just drag people in here and rearrange as I want. Let's see here. Um, you know, I think Michael and Jackson and Ariana would probably have stuff to talk about so we can stick them together. Uh, you know, let's see David and Elon. That's an interesting, uh, mix, but, uh, yeah.